Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today I'll be doing a review on an SMA Seattle model aircraft, Delta Airlines, McDonnell Douglas, MD-11 and their 1997 Ron Allen interim retro livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. I purchased this model off eBay and their website address is www.ebay.com or you can download the uh, app and get it through that way. But before I go into details about this particular aircraft model, allow me to share you some information about the history of Delta Airlines and how they came about, if you would please. Delta is an American-based airline that was founded on March 2, 1925 as Huff Dial Industries Incorporated in Macon, Georgia. Then the company moved to Monroe, Louisiana in 1925 as the Huff Dial Industries Corporation was officially incorporated as Delta Air Service on December 3, 1928. Then officially commenced operations on June 17, 1929 and was officially incorporated as Delta Air Corporation on December 31, 1930 and eventually relocated its corporate headquarters to Atlanta, Georgia sometime in 1941 and operated under the Delta Air Corporation name up until 1945 when the name was eventually changed to what has become known to the world today as Delta Airlines. Delta is currently the 8th oldest operating airline in the world based on foundation date after KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, Avianca, Qantas, Aeroflot Russian Airlines, Czech Airlines, Finnair, and Tajik Air respectively. However, Delta is still considered the oldest operating airline still operating in the United States of America today as Delta is also the largest operating airline in the world when measured in terms of generated revenue asset value and market capitalization as well as the second largest operating airline in the world when based in terms of fleet size, scheduled kilometers flown, as well as the number of passengers carried. Whereas the corporate headquarters of Delta along with its main hub and base of operations is located on the grounds of Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport which is located approximately seven miles south of the downtown district section of Atlanta, Georgia. Delta also has operational hubs that's located at Boston Logan International Airport, which is located in the Boston suburb of Winthrop, Massachusetts, Detroit Metropolitan Wayne County Airport, which is located in the Detroit suburb of Romulus, Michigan, Los Angeles International Airport, which is located in Los Angeles, California, Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport, which is located in Minneapolis, Minnesota, John F. Kennedy International Airport, which is located in Jamaica, Queens, New York, LaGuardia Airport, which is located in East Elmhurst, Queens, New York, Salt Lake City International Airport, which is located in Salt Lake City, Utah, and Seattle-Tacoma International Airport, located in Seattle, Washington. And the focus city hubs of Delta are located at Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport, located in Hebron, Kentucky, and Raleigh-Durham International Airport, located in Cedar Fort Township, Wake County, North Carolina. As of December 2021, or at the time of this video review posting, Delta currently flies to 325 destinations worldwide on six inhabited continents, as Delta is one of 10 airlines to own this actual distinction of permanently flying to all six inhabited continents, along with Air Canada, Air China, British Airways, Emirates, Korean Air, Qantas, Qatar Airways, South African Airways, and United Airlines respectively, with an operating fleet of 835 aircraft with no unfulfilled orders pending on this particular aircraft as this aircraft is no longer operating in Delta's fleet. Also as of December 2021 or at the time of this video review posting, Delta is one of 150 airlines in the world of aviation that currently operates as a certified three-star airline carrier according to the international airline review firm Skytrax Magazine. All right, everyone, let's take a look at the front of this box here. What you see is the aircraft type, the McDonnell Douglas MD-11, the actual aircraft, the, ma the aircraft manufacturer, Seattle model aircraft, as well as the 1-200 scale model information you see at the front of the box. All right, now you're looking at the bottom of the box. Nothing much there, which you see back there. That's just the bottom of the box, all right? All right, now you're looking at the top of the box, and what you see there is the Boeing official license product decal, uh, SMA Seattle model aircraft uh, website information, there's social media page information there as well, as well as the aircraft type, 
You can pause and read that if you like. In the meantime, I'm going to keep this moving, all right? This is the bottom of the aircraft box, and all you see there is the aircraft type as well as the manufacturer's name, SMA, Seattle Model Aircraft. All right, now you're looking at the left side of the box, and this is all the information concerning this particular aircraft model, the registration ship number, the serial number, the type of engines, uh, the kind of livery scheme, the interim livery scheme you see there. Then there's the uh, aircraft manufacturer, Seattle model aircraft right there, as well as the aircraft type you see there. All right, this is the right side of the box. The same information on the left side of the box I showed you earlier on, all right? All right, now you're looking at the wooden uh, model stand that actually came with the model. It's pretty strong and sturdy, to say the least. I can say that. And then you see this black pattern right up here, though. The sole purpose of the black pattern, everyone, is not only to protect your model, it also prevents it from being damaged or scratched when you put your aircraft on this particular model stand. You also see the uh, aircraft manufacturer there displayed on the uh, bottom of the wooden model stand. Now you're looking at this plastic bag, and what you see in this plastic bag are the gear replacement doors for this particular aircraft model, along with the two little toothpicks. Please stay tuned as I go into uh, details for the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors for this particular aircraft model, all right? All right, with all that information out of the way about the history of Delta Airlines and how they came about and still continues to operate strongly as we speak, plus all the details here on the front of this box, plus the actual wooden model stand that came with the model, as well as the gear replacement doors inside this plastic bag featuring the two little toothpicks for these uh, particular aircraft model. With no further ado, everyone, here is the actual aircraft model. Let's check it out. There it is, everyone, the SMA Seattle model aircraft, Delta Airlines, McDonnell Douglas MD-11, and their 1997 Ron Allen interim retro livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. All right, allow me to share some information about the Delta Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft and how it became a part of their fleet. Is this aircraft you're looking at here, please? Delta Airlines became the North American launch customer as well as the second operator overall after launch customer Fin Air that acquired this iconic jetliner aircraft, the McDonnell Douglas MD-11, as Delta Airlines took delivery of its first of 17 McDonnell Douglas MD-11s that Delta had placed orders for back in September 1988 and received their very first McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft which bared the registration ship number November 891 Delta Lima on December 21st, 1990 and took delivery of its 17th and last McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft that bared the registration ship number November 815 Delta Echo on February 20th, 1998. Delta Airlines at one time previously registered and operated as many as 17 McDonnell Douglas MD-11s in their fleet as this aircraft was one of the airline's official flagship jetliners for the Atlanta, Georgia-based carrier for 24 years up until the day of January 1, 2004, and that's when Delta Airlines officially operated its last revenue passenger MD-11 flight, which was designated as Delta Airlines Flight Delta Lima 56 that originated from Tokyo Narita International Airport in Tokyo, Japan and touched down at Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport in Atlanta, Georgia at approximately 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, which pretty much signaled the end of an era of Delta Airlines flying in the iconic McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft. As it officially flew out of Delta's fleet and officially flew off into the aviation sunset as Delta Airlines was previously the third largest operator of this aircraft variant after Swiss Air and American Airlines respectively as this aircraft was eventually replaced with their more fuel-efficient Boeing 777-200ERs, which entered the Delta fleet on March 23, 1999. Now let's talk about the interim livery scheme you see on this aircraft here. And after 35 years of sporting the iconic Delta widget livery scheme as the standard signature livery look for the entire Delta Airlines fleet, the Atlanta, Georgia-based airline underwent a major change with the livery change makeover in 1997 when the airline unveiled this short-lived livery scheme, which was given the name the Ron Allen Interim Livery Scheme, as this livery scheme was named in honor of Ron Allen, 
who was the former CEO, the chief executive officer for Delta Airlines from 1987 up until his retirement for, from Delta Airlines in 1997, as Delta Airlines sported this short-lived livery scheme up until the year 2000, when it was officially replaced with the Colors in Motion livery scheme, as this livery scheme was actually created as well as designed by the consultancy firm of Landor Associates, whose global headquarters is located in San Francisco, California. So, with all that information out of the way about this aircraft and how this livery came about, with no further ado, everyone, let's get down to the nitty gritty and allow me to show you all the details on this aircraft model, shall we? Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at this aircraft model from the uh, port slash left side. We're going to start at the front of the aircraft where you see the um, front nose gears, the nose gear struts, the nose gear door featuring the partial registration ship number on there. I'll get to that momentarily. You see the uh, Peter 2s and the static ports right here and there. See the radome nose cone, the cockpit windows as well as the windshield wipers. Now let's talk about the 808 that's played on the nose door, which is this right here. 808 is the actual fleet number as this particular number is also displayed on the tail fin the aircraft I'm about to show you that right now All right, you see the 808 on top of the tail fin of the aircraft you see it there. That's the fleet number. All right All right, we still at the uh, Port side of the aircraft and between the cockpit windows and the L1 entrance door is the sky team decal Which is this decal you see display right there? And Delta Airlines joined the Sky Team Alliance along with Aereo Mexico, Air France, and Korean Air as the four founding members on June 22, 2000, which consists of 19 airline members from five inhabited continents. And then you see the updated Delta Widget logo, which is this logo right here by the Delta Airlines uh, billboard title. And this was the updated version of the iconic classic Delta Widget logo that was first introduced in 1959 as Delta Airlines entered the jet age that featured the full corporate name besides the updated version of the iconic Delta Widget logo. As Delta Airlines sported this logo from March 1995 up until March 2000 when this logo was ultimately replaced with the soft widget logo which was unveiled shortly thereafter. And of course, in 2007, they went back to this logo, but they just painted it in all red, as you can see. All right. All right, now you're looking at the center of the aircraft, and right behind the engine is the landing bogey gears you see here. It features the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear door. But more important, you see these big, massive engines right here, featuring the engine cones right there. And these are the Pratt & Whitney PW4460 turbofan type engines that was used on this particular Delta Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft. Now I'm going to turn this aircraft model around. We're going to check out and see if the uh, engine blades do spin. Let's check it out. All right. Now you're looking at the front of the uh, engines here on the port slash left side featuring the engine strikes known as the air deflectors here and there as well. Now do the engine fans blade spin? Let's find out. Perfect. Yes, they do. Awesome. There's no inboard land light on this aircraft, unfortunately. But then you got a front visual view of the landing bogey gears, which features the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. All right, now you're looking at the front of the, uh, the engines here on the starboard side of the aircraft, featuring the uh, engine strike known as the air deflectors here, as well as there. And due to turbo fan blade spin on this side of here, let's find out. Yes, they do. Perfect. There's no uh, inboard land light on the wing here, but you got a front visual view of the landing bogey gears here that features the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear door. All right, now you're looking at the third engine since this is a tri-jet uh, wide-body aircraft. And then there's some turbo fan blades in there as well, but unfortunately they do not spin, but you look in there, that's the third engine of this aircraft. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft where you got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wiper, the radome nose cone, the nose gear doors, the nose gear landing lights inside of the nose gear door, the nose gear strut, as well as the front visual view of the uh, front landing gears. All right. Now you're looking at the upper and the lower wingtip device on this aircraft model here and there as well. It features the red navigation light that sits uh, on the edge of this wing next to this wingtip device right here, painted in the red and blue colors. 
All right, we're at the back of the aircraft here on the port side where you got a better side visual view of the, uh, the third engine that sits above the fuselage and right below the tail fin of the aircraft with the Delta title on there. And then you see the American flag decal. Before I go into that part, this little door right here, that is the AFT bulk bin door you see there in that chrome right there. Now we back to this part of the American flag decal you see displayed there. And this flag decal represents the country where Delta Airlines currently operates from as one of the major flag carrier airlines of the United States of America. And then right next to the American flag decal is the registration ship number, November 808 Delta Echo. Registration ship number, November 808 Delta Echo. This aircraft was the 10th McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft that entered the Delta Airlines fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft that took took place is actually unknown, but was delivered to Delta Airlines sometime in October 1993 and operated in the Delta Airlines fleet up until it was sold to FedEx in October 2004, where this aircraft was converted into a freighter cargo aircraft in 2006. All right, now looking at the tail fin of the aircraft, it features the third uh, tri-engine on this aircraft here. It's painted in blue and red. Features the fleet number as well as the Delta titles on that engine, which I find impressive. All right, we're at the back of the aircraft, and what you see is the APU exhaust, which still stands for zero rare power unit exhaust hole, and there is a hole there, there as well as the entire aircraft from the rear view angle. Let's check that part out. There it is, the Delta Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft from the rear view angle. Ain't it beautiful? All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the uh, starboard side. You're gonna see the front nose gears right here, the nose gear struts. The nose gear door featuring the fleet number on that nose gear door. Uh, that's another door right there. I have no idea what that is. That's got to be the crew escape hatch door. I have no idea. I forgot what that is. Then you see the Peter tubes and the stat ports, what have you. You see the, uh, the Sky Team logo. You see the uh, radar nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. You see the Delta Airlines title as well as the uh, Airlines logo, iconic logo, the widget logo as well as the front cargo container loading door you see there all right all right we have to send the aircraft here on the starboard side and behind these engines are the, 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 the you got a better visual view of the landing bogey gears here featuring the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors and then you're looking at the uh the pratt and whitney pw4460 turbofan type engines on this side of the aircraft including the engine cones right there All right, now you're looking at the dual wingtip device on this aircraft, featuring in the red and blue painted colors there. And then you see the green navigation light displayed here on the edge of this wingtip you see here. All right. All right, you at the back of the aircraft here, and what you see there in this metal, this chrome part is the rear cargo containing container loading door. Then you see the American flag decal, and then the registration ship number as well as the uh, tail fin of the aircraft that's painted in red and blue colors. It features the Delta logo displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft and as well as that engine. Let's check that out. There it is, also featuring the fleet number displayed there as well. Awesome. All right, before I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in full detail, Allow me to let you check out one feature on this aircraft model, which is the rolling gears. Let's check that out. It rolls pretty good. A little rough on the edges, but it rolls pretty good for the most part. And then the gears, uh, it does tilt. No, they do not tilt, but it tilts. But the bad news about this aircraft model, the nose gear, the front nose gear at the front of the aircraft, it does not swivel. That's the only downside about this aircraft. But anyway, it's still a good aircraft model. So with that said, allow me to show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model. Show you? Let's check it out. Now you're looking at this aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view. We're going to start at the front of the aircraft where you see the radon nose cone, as well as the windshield wipers in the cockpit window. You see the Sky Team decal on both sides. You see the Delta Airlines title, as well as the iconic widget logo on both sides. 
and then you slide up this way the anti-collision beacon light a couple more antennas right there the ADF antenna one's painted in white and one's painted in black and then you see the area bird's eye view of this engine here with the delta title on both sides and then there's the vertical stabilizer known as the uh, tail and then you see the horizontal stabilizer right there as well as right there there are no little illuminator lights on here but they was they would light up this tail here when it float doing at night i know they had some luminary lights on this uh aircraft now let's check out the engines and the wings over here now you see the engines right there featuring the engine strike known as the air deflectors there as well as the wing as you see the flaps slats aileron scores what have you let's see oh yeah that's the upper wing as well as the fuel dump valve right there and then you come out right here you got the engines right there including the wings right there on top as well as the flat slats aileron spoils what have you and then you see the fuel dump valve on this sphere right here on the edge of the wing next to this wing wingtip device all right now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model where the front part of it is uh white and everything else is chrome you look at the uh the radon nose cone then you come right there you see this crew escape hatch door the front nose gear door as well as the nose gear and then you slide up this way the middle of the aircraft the hole where the stand goes in at the center bogey gear there and then you see a couple more antennas the anti-collision beacon right right there another antenna and then right back there is the APU housing door right there and then there's the horizontal stabilizers underneath a little chip there but that's all right and then let's check out the uh, center of the aircraft right here see the gears right there let's check that they tilt no nah, they don't even tilt but that's all right see the engines there as well as the wings underneath that features the flaps slats ailerons cords what have you and then there's the fuel dump valve and the lower part of the wingtip device now let's check out the uh, the gears the center bogey gears right there they roll but they don't tilt that's all right and then let's check out the gears right here. Oh, they magnetic, but it stayed in it. They don't tilt. And then there's the engine right there, as well as the wings underneath that features the flaps, slats, aileron spores, what have you. The fuel dump valve, as well as the lower part of the wingtip device displayed on this side of the aircraft as well. Okay, since I showed you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in full detail, now I'm going to put it on this uh, wooden model stand that actually came with the model. So with no further ado everyone, here is the model on the stand. Let's check it out. Alright, fine got this model on the stand with no problem, no hesitation. The model stands pretty strong and sturdy, I can say that. As you see it being displayed in a takeoff landing position with the model on the stand being viewed from the port side of the aircraft. All right, now you're seeing this model being displayed in a takeoff landing position with the model on the stand being viewed from the front view angle. All right, now you're looking at this model being displayed with the model on the stand being viewed in a takeoff landing position being viewed from the starboard side of the aircraft. And finally, you're seeing this model being displayed in a takeoff landing position with the model on the stand being viewed from the tail cam angle. Okay, before I take this model off the stand, I got it at this angle for a reason. And the reason is, is the, gear, the magnetic gears actually came with the model. So I'm going to go ahead and take them off, starting with the front nose gear, as you can see there. Gears there. The gears here on the port side, you see there. Gears on the starboard side, see there, as well as the center bogey gear as well. There, that snap on one there, the center one snap on, it's magnetic as well. So, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and let you see this model at a different angle in flight mode position with the model on the stand. Let's check it out. Okay, now you find seeing this model being displayed without the gears in flight mode position in the gears up position 
with the mouth on the stand. Now you got one or two options how you want to display your mouth from this point on. If you want to continue to display it like this in flight mode position without the gears in the gear up position, that's fine. Remember these gear replacement doors I showed you earlier on in this plastic bag? That's the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors is to substitute your model while you display your model like this in flight mode position. Or you can do what I suggest to do, keep them in the gear down position. Gears up, gear down, your choice. But I choose to leave mine on there because it adds more value to the model. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put these gears back on this model, take this model off the stand, and go ahead and wrap up this model review. All right? Okay, let's talk about the seating configuration on this iconic jetliner aircraft. The Delta Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft seated 268 passengers in a two-class configurated cabin layout. All right, everyone, here's the breakdown. Rows 1 to 13, which will be from here to about right in the, there. You have 50 business elite class seats. And rows 30 to 56, which will be about from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. You had an additional 218 economy class seats, which brought the total of 268 seats. And finally, from 1991 up until 2004, Delta Airlines previously utilized this aircraft, the McDonnell Douglas MD-11 on routes from Atlanta, Georgia, to destinations such as London Gatwick, Frankfurt, Germany, Rome, Fumicino, Athens, Greece, Istanbul, Turkey, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, via Sao Paulo, Brazil, Tokyo, Narita, Portland, Oregon, Los Angeles, California, New York, JFK, Dublin, Ireland, Shannon, Ireland via Dublin, Ireland, Dallas, Fort Worth, Paris, Charles de Gaulle, Manchester, England, Orlando, Florida, Amsterdam, Netherlands, Cincinnati, Ohio, and Zurich, Switzerland. From Cincinnati, Ohio to Portland, Oregon, Atlanta, Georgia, London, Gatwick, and Frankfurt, Germany, from Los Angeles, California, to Atlanta, Georgia, Tokyo, Narita, Frankfurt, Germany, Hong Kong via Anchorage, Alaska, and from New York, JFK, to Atlanta, Georgia, Tel Aviv, Israel, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, Cairo, Egypt, and Tokyo, Narita, and from Portland, Oregon, to Atlanta, Georgia, Tokyo, Narita, Nagoya, Japan, Osaka, Kansai, Fukuoka, Japan, Taipei, Taiwan, Bangkok, Suvana, Bumi, Seoul, Ichiyan, and Cincinnati, Ohio. Those were the routes. All right, everyone, this will conclude this mile review. I'd like to know if you got this mile, are you planning on getting it? Like I said, your only outside chance of getting this model is on eBay. However, Gemini just, just dropped their version of this particular aircraft model as well. I want to know if I should go ahead and do a review on that one. No, let me know if I should purchase and do a review on that one. Or, you know, you okay with this one? Either one is great. I recommend that one as well. So with that said, please take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. Peace.